Sounds very generous, this Pauline. Yes, well, yeah, she is. well, some people are generous. This may come as a shock to you. I've never heard of it before. I mean, taking people on them, reckoning to train them up. Not secretaries, anyway. It's called helping people get back into the workplace after they've taken time off to bring up their stupid and grateful families. Does she get some sort of financial incentive from the government or something? I'm not sure. She must do. I can't see why else she'd do it. Uh, maybe it's because she's nice. Maybe it's because she cares about people. Oh, really? In that case, I'm glad she isn't my accountant. You don't want an accountant who's nice. You want one who knows what they're doing. She's a very good accountant, actually. And you know, did she tell you? Well, she must be doing something, right? That office block's in one of the most expensive bits of the city. Is it? I'd love to meet her. This boss of yours. When you get to know her better, I'd have to invite her around sometime. What does she look like? God, they're not still going on about that person who won 38 million quid. It's two weeks ago. That's not news. You know, the news to find out who it is. Well, they found out who it is. We don't care who it is. We have better things to think about. It's an obscene amount of money to give to one person. Depends on the person. There's nothing obscene about money. What would you do with 38 million pounds, David? I don't know. Spend it. Listen to this. It's been confirmed that the winning ticket was bought at Mathura International Stores, Williston, Leeds. You're kidding, Mathuras. That's the shop on the way to school. Well, you know what that means. Must be someone from around here. Not necessarily. More than likely. Hell spells. Makes you think, doesn't it? Idiots. It's immoral. It's disgusting. It's demeaning. Not like sheep. Yeah. There's an amnesty meeting this dinner time. Do you want to go? I've got a rehearsal. Oh, well, you'll have to forgive me for forgetting. I'm only in the chorus after all. Sarah? I know what I'd spend it on. Sorry? If I won 38 million. Oh, yes. Apart from the obvious. Go on. I'd use it to shit from a great height on everybody who's ever had a go at me. Or piss me off, or anything like that. Like who? Like that sod at head office who didn't give me the regional manager's job last year. Yes. And my so called brother. I'd buy his company out completely. And I'd sack him. Would you? I don't know. I suppose if you won that much, you wouldn't give a toss, would you? You'd be able to rise above it, laughing your socks off, knowing all the bastards just knew. Thanks for the lift. Oh, don't forget to remind Elaine. Sorry? About tomorrow morning that you won't be in. We're going to Auntie Edna's funeral. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll remind her. It's been all right, by the way, since the divorce. Yeah, yeah, I think. Uh, I think she gets a bit lonely sometimes. You ought to invite her around for a meal sometime. Yeah, sometime I will. See you later. Bye. Oh. 
it did worry me that we were advertising in all the wrong publications. Wrong? <gasps> we advertise in nearly every magazine and newspaper throughout the country. Exactly. Perhaps we should have worded the envelope differently as well. Why? These are little more than begging letters. All of them. Look at them. Yes, I know, but isn't that what we want? The usual bump from head office. Oh, and a letter from Matt Cole in Headingley, who you refused a mortgage to last week. Oh, yes. They say they're going to kidnap your wife and children and see how you like being treated like filth. <laughs> you look. And I was wondering. Have you ever fancied spending your lunch time playing sexy Scrabble? With no clothes on. admired people who were good with their hands. Just taking them to school. It's frightening. There's no end to it. You actually look forward to being 50 when you can finally pack them off to university and live again. Breathe again. 38 million. Can you imagine? Bastard. What I wouldn't give for 38 million. What would you do with it? Ooh. Take a lover and disappear. I couldn't have just a quick drag, could I? <sighs> mm. God, Virginia, you don't know what a joy it is having someone around who I can actually talk to. You're like a breath of fresh air. You are, honestly. I haven't missed the window cleaner at all, have I? No. <clears throat> I don't think so, no. Madam, I'm expecting my eighth child in August, and I have just discovered that my husband has run up over £10,000 in debt. I am desperate. Oh. I bet you are, you silly bitch. What do you want eight kids for? That's awful. Can you imagine? If it's true. Why shouldn't it be true? Well, at least half of these will be fraudulent. I realise that some possibly aren't genuine, but what about the half that are? How do we know which half is which? We don't. But if we give them all some money, at least we know we're getting it half right. I don't think we're tackling this as efficiently as we could. I don't think you've thought about what the scale of all this is going to demand. I don't think either of us did. We need to hire experts people to assess the applications and make the recommendations and they'll need to consult thank you and they'll need to consult a range of specialists and how much will they charge we're not lining their pocket surely if you spend thousands of pounds on a project you know nothing about you'll need someone to tell you whether it's a good idea or not it's simple it it's common sense. I suppose it just isn't exactly what I'd envisaged, involving so many more people. What had you envisaged? I don't know. Oh, it all seems very complicated to me. Specialists and God knows what. Disposing of this kind of money is complicated. But if we don't address that, we are going to fall flat on our fannies. She doesn't look convinced. You said you wanted to help people. The point is, if we approach this properly, you can help so many more. Let's face it, the three of us won't open the letters we've already received this side of Christmas, never mind answering them. And how many more will arrive tomorrow? And the day after? I've 
ever since we first met. And I understand. I feel the same way too. That surprises you, doesn't it? You had no idea, did you, at all? I've surprised myself. Although God knows why. Now that it's happened, it seems as if it was always inevitable. Hello. Who are you? Uh, Rick. You a burglar? <laughs> no. Everything all right? Only you, you're looking a bit thoughtful. You want to talk about it? About what? Well, I don't know. Life's bollocks. Why? I don't even fall in love with the right people. They are the right people. People who look at me twice. Why wouldn't anyone look at you twice? You're lovely. No, I'm not. Am I? Who is he anyway? No, that's no one. <clears throat> he must be blind not to know it's you. It isn't that simple. What? Is he married? Yeah. Well, doesn't mean he's happy. Well, as it happens, this person has indicated that they're very bored with their marriage. Well then. The thing is, this person doesn't know that I feel like that about them. Well, no one's going to tell him if you don't. No. I mean, the thing is... It's, it's a gamble. If he tells you he's not interested, you know, you'll feel worse. But what if he doesn't? What if he's been waiting for someone like you to come along? What if it's you he's been waiting for? Don't let Fanny Alice tell you what to do. It's your money, love. You do what you want with it. That's what I pay Paul in for, to tell me what to do. And anyway, she's right. So? What's the problem, then? The more people I employ, the bigger risk there is it'll get back to David and the girls before I'm ready to tell them. That's the problem. There are ways round that. No one you employ needs to know who you are or where the money's coming from. That's just silly. Well, some folk might think it's silly that you haven't told your family yet. Me, for one. You know why I haven't told them? I know what you told me, yes. Don't you like them, love? <sighs> of course I like them. Well, not everybody likes their family. Luckily, we can choose our friends. It'd be different if they'd been born into that kind of money, but they weren't. They wouldn't know how to keep it in perspective. It's a slippery slope. Do you know what I think? No, but I swear we're going to hear about it anyway. You're scared of spending that money because you think you don't deserve it. So you see, you've got to do something worthy with it. Otherwise, something bad will happen to you. I'm not saying you shouldn't do what you're doing, Dov. I mean, some people think you're crackers, but I don't. Not really, because I know you love, you like helping people. But couldn't you spend a bit of it on yourself without feeling guilty? I mean, there must be something you've always wanted. Like a rose, or a jack, or fitted carpet. I know I have. And what about them girls? Don't they deserve a bit of something? Don't they have the right to know that their mother's worth more than Leeds United? You're right. You're right. Of course they have a right to know. They 
going to tell them? I don't want to, not yet, but... I don't like lying. Every day, I question whether I'm doing the right thing or not. And I think I am, but... I doubt if they'd see it like that. And they're bound to find out about it eventually anyway, aren't they? One way or another. I don't think there's any point in pretending about that. You'd better go ahead and advertise for all this stuff you think we're gonna need. If we're gonna do it, let's do it properly. You sure? And come lunchtime, you and me are going out spending. And tonight? No, no, that's not tonight. Best wait till tomorrow after the funeral. I'll tell them then. I'll wait till we get home, I'll sit them all down and... and I'll tell them then. Hi. Is Megan around? No, she's gone to Sainsbury's or something. Oh. Okay. Now, what was it about? Uh, what? Well, I wondered if I could borrow a spade. Only, I promised my dad to dig the garden. Right, help yourself. Oh, and uh, just put it back when you finish. Don't bother knocking or anything, all right? find anything you really want. <laughs> Wrong city. Wrong country. Have you ever been on Concord? <laughs> we could be in New York in two hours. I mean, you're behind us. Or are they here? Like one or two other. We could be back here before we realised we'd set out. We could disappear up our own arseholes like they do on Star Trek. It would be exciting. Star Trek, do they? Were you close? Hmm? Well, the funeral tomorrow. Oh, no, no. Not really. Not recently, anyway. My mother's sister, she moved to Bridlington when I was little. She met this photographer on holiday on the seafront. It was a look at first sight, apparently. They didn't have much money, but they were always very happy till he died. They didn't have any children, which is why I'm insisting on my lot going. There won't be anyone much there if we don't show Willie. Oh. It wasn't that I was thinking about. When are you going to tell them? What I'm thinking I might tell them, what I think I'll say is, why not try the truth? 
Yes, that's what I had in mind, really. Sit them all down, make them realise it's something important, and then say, you know that big win on the lottery the other week? Well, it was me. And we can all splash out a bit and treat ourselves to something nice, but we're not to be silly with it. We're to use it to help other people to do some good. And how do you think that'll go down? You never can tell. Eight treble, that's twenty-four, and twelve is thirty-six. So, that's me again. Um, underpants. Look, Elaine, why don't we just do it? We can play Scrabble after. Variety is the spice of life. We've only got forty-five minutes and we haven't even had any dinner yet. You're the manager. You can take as long as you like. I've told you, you've got no appointments this afternoon. So just take my tie off. What's the point of that? Look, when you're ready to shag, I'll take my underpants off, OK? I don't know why you came if you're not going to be any fun. You said come back to my place for some sex and some lunch. I didn't think you actually meant the bit about Scrabble. This isn't Scrabble. It's foreplay. Come on. Underpants. Oh, I can see why you're in a rush. <laughs> yeah, my belly thinks my throat's been cut as well. <laughs> Your turn. Oh, sod this. Let's just bloody well get on with it. <laughs> oh, John! What are you doing here? We've got games this aft. I forgot my soccer kit. Uh, this is David. I've told you about him. He's my new boyfriend. David, this is my son, Jordan. Have you had any dinner, Jordan? No. Right, well, I'll do us some lunch then. Can you pay him? I haven't got any cash. Sarah. Thank God I've been looking for you all over. Mr. Brunskill, I thought you had a rehearsal. I had to get rid of Lucy. She was useless. I don't know why I didn't ask you to do the part in the first place. Will you do it? Will you be my Antigone? Please. you were hitting your stupid play. Mr. Brunska wants to see you. Lucy smashed a collarbone. You're gonna have to be Antigone. It's true. <gasps> Great, innit? We get to kiss. I'm playing Eamon, my boyfriend. I don't know very much about cars. Do you? 
Me? I can strip an engine in three minutes. I was in the ATS. Me and Princess Elizabeth. Can I help you, ladies? Oh, you can help me any time, love. The question is, can you do out for her? How long does it take to order one of these? The point is, if we can't take one now, or we don't want one. Say thank you to David for the lift, Jordan. Thanks, David. Okay. See you tonight, love. Bye. Bye. He's a good lad. And you know what? I think he likes you. Oh, shit. Who's that? I don't say anything. Like what? <sighs> I thought it were you sneaking about. I just started my new job today. Dinner lady. Only for pin money like, you know. I'll come out for a fag. So rules and regulations in there, miserable beggars. You can't fart but what they're spraying detox at you. Hiya. I thought all your lot went to the same place as our Phil. I'm just giving someone a lift. Oh. I'm Denise. I live next door to David and Alison and the girls. Oh. How are you going to introduce us? Elaine works at the bank. She's my personal assistant. Oh, ooh, pleased to meet you. Very nice. <laughs> well, I'm better sure well in. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the crap they put in them school dinners. Don't do what I wouldn't do. Virginia, thank God you're in. If I don't talk to someone, I'll explode. Oh, I couldn't, could I? Do you mind? Whatever. I'll go mad over there. I don't know why I don't just leave him right now. I don't know why I don't just throw everything into the Saab and take off. Here, I've got some. accused me of having an affair. Can you believe this? I said I told him if I was having an affair. Does he think I'd bother making a secret of it? Doesn't he think I'd just love to rub his nose in it? Of course, he didn't have an answer to that, did he? God, for someone with a doctorate in whatever the hell he's got a doctorate in, he can be bloody thick when he wants to be. <laughs> well, that's probably what he's got a doctorate in, actually. <sighs> Being thick. <laughs> Are you crying? Virginia? Sorry, I, I didn't realise it. Is something the matter? Has somebody upset you? <laughs> Try not to cry. I, I, I'm no good when people cry. Here, have some more of this. God, where's Alison? She should be here. What's her phone number? I don't want to talk to her. I want to talk to you. Do you? Oh, what about? I'm in love with you. So, sorry. What do you mean? I want to be with you all the time, forever. I love you. Sorry. Jane Crowther Holdings Limited. Yes? We're here. Where do you want it? Sorry. 
One Steinway Boudoir Grand. All £55,000 worth of it. We don't shift so many of these. Where do you want it? Can't help it. Ever since the first time I saw you, I just felt so happy, so alive, as if everything just meant something at last. Just thought it was important to let you know, that's all. Oh, and I'm glad you have. I don't know why it seems stupid now. No, never. Honestly. I I'm glad we can talk like this, and, and I want you to know I'm very fond of you. And I think you've been very brave to tell me. Do you? Absolutely. Here. Let's drink to us, hmm? To our little secret. How about that? You're taking this very well. So long as you do understand that nothing could ever happen between us. <laughs> well, it's quite a compliment, really, isn't it? <laughs> but, yes, yes, it is. I mean, that's definitely what, what it's meant to be. I, I want you to know I have nothing but the highest, most greatest, enormous respect for you. Oh. <laughs> I, and I would never do anything to come between you and Mike. Just wanted to tell you that's all. Come here. Oh, there. <laughs> there. <laughs> You're very nice. You're so fantastic. Oh. Could I just say one thing, though? What's that? Of course you can. Couldn't you find someone a bit classier to knock about with than the window cleaner? I mean, that really cut me up. What the hell are you talking about? Th this morning I saw you. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. In the shed. I came round to borrow a spade. And... You've been drinking too much. No, then I hadn't. How could you imagine such a thing? I didn't imagine it. I saw you. That's a terrible thing to say. No, I saw you. Does your mother know you drink so much? What are you talking about? And does your mother know you're a bloody lesbian? What? Good God! Oh, Megan! No! Get away! Don't touch! I, I'm sorry! I, I didn't mean to offend you! That's the last thing in the world I wanted to do! I, I love you! Well, I don't want you to! Megan! They wanted to know where you wanted it, and I didn't know. Other window's fine. You have been splashing out. Yes. And she hated every minute of it, don't deny it. <laughs> it was quite good fun, actually. Now then. Oh, you've been busy. I have. Based on an annual income of four million, our running costs should approximately be 10% of that gives us an annual budget of £400,000 for office rentals, salaries, that sort of thing. Now, that allows us somewhere between 15 to 20 permanent staff. Right. That gives you, say, five people to assess the claims, make recommendations about who gets what, each with their own areas of expertise, and each with clerical support of at least two other people. I see. I've drafted an ad here. What else did you treat yourself to? Anything? No, no, I couldn't see anything. I bought that for Marion, really. Only she'll have to keep it here because she hasn't got room in her flat. I've, um... I bought something for you as well. It's parked out the front. You can see it from the window. It's the green one. Hope you like it. Do you think it's a bit flashy? <laughs> it's definitely flashy. Well, you shouldn't have. I just wanted to say thank you. I couldn't have done any of this without you. Um, that you're covering up your insurance there. I've sorted all that out for you. Well, I don't know what to 
say. Are you sure? Sh shall I go ahead with the ad then? Yes, definitely. Then all I've got left to do is tell my family. I'm telling you what I told all the other journalists. I haven't got a clue who bought that ticket. All I know is bought me a lot of trading and I'm a very happy man. Do you ever sell tickets to kids? No, never. Uh, that'd be 58 pence, love. You ever bought a ticket in here, lovely? No, she hasn't. You trying to get me into bother or what? I'm just asking. Yeah, well, if you were a proper bloody journalist, you'd get off your bloody fat asses and start asking around out there. Not just in here. Somebody must be spending some money somewhere. Yeah, but they're not, are they? And uh, we have been asking around. I mean, we're dealing with a very shrewd customer here. In fact, the latest thinking is it's somebody so cool, so keen to keep their identity a secret, they probably haven't even told their own family yet. Told their own family yet. Told their own family yet. Kill her, you'll have to kill me too. You know what? Oh no, he's made not a bit of it. Lines, we're learning lines. I die alone. We'll have to go in five minutes. You don't think I'm gonna let you die with me after everything I've been through? Have you heard me? The traffic will be appalling. Shh. You don't deserve to die? Uh, if you die, I don't want to live. Does Virginia know we're going in five minutes? You chose life and I chose death. It's a barrel of laughs, this bloody Antigone, isn't it? Will you tell him to shut up? Why do you keep looking at me like that, Charlotte? Does Virginia know what time... She's not coming. What do you mean? To the funeral. She isn't coming. Of course she's coming. She's not. She's loading a car up with stuff. Mum! She says she's going back to York. What's all this? I'm going back to York. Have you said that, have you? I'm not going back to university. I'm just going back to York, OK? What do you mean? I don't want to be here anymore. I mean, no offence, only I've got friends in York. I might as well be there with them. Well, do you have to go now, this morning? Yes. Why? Why not? You know why not? We're going to Auntie Edna's funeral, that's why not. I didn't even hardly know her. I asked you particularly. Uh, and she didn't know me, and if she had, she wouldn't like me. Don't be stupid. I'm not being stupid. Well, what are you going to do in York? What are your plans? Do I have to have any? Yes, you do, actually. Morning, Megan. Well, I haven't, all right. I'm just going. God, you sound like my dad. What's the matter? Did you know your next door neighbour has sex in the shed with a window cleaner? Pardon? Megan? It's true. What do you know? I just do, okay. Come on, get changed. I want you at this funeral. It's important. All right, all right. She could swear like a trooper could, our Edna. <laughs> yeah, listen. Do you remember that time at Winnie's house? Oh, no, of course you couldn't. You were only little. <laughs> Winnie could be a right pain in the behind when she wanted to, couldn't she, Alison? You remember Winnie, very thin hair, and a bungalow in Beechdale Avenue. Anyway, she'd had this upset, and she were crying her eyes out. And my mother were telling us this after. Only my mother were all as right soft, you know. And she said, oh, but she did cry her eyes out. And Edna, right dry, said, well, she'll piss less. <laughs> Who's is this? Yours. No. Well, people this, then. I don't think so. I don't wear that much makeup. Is this anybody's? It's not mine. 
Oh yeah, it's mine. Ooh, midnight pink. It's for slappers. Mum? Oh no. I always use nutmeg. <laughs> well, it isn't mine. Is it left here? Oh. Alison, come on, you're navigating. <laughs> the Jane Crowther Trust. Funding available. What do you make of that? Or something. I um, I had a bit of good news just before we went in. Oh, did you? You know Geoffrey, Doreen's lad. Mm. Well, he wants to buy Edna's cottage, and he said he'd give me ten thousand for my share. Do you think that sounds reasonable? Oh, I don't know. David would know better than me. Well, anyway, I've said yes, <laughs> and I've thought it all through while we were in there. And I've decided to give you half of it. What? That's right. Oh, no. No, I'd like to. No, no, no. I couldn't accept it, honestly. Why not? You could do all sorts with it. Oh, I know it's not a huge sum. Not these days, but... Well, it's better than a kick up the trousers. Oh, no. You could upgrade your little car. Or you could go on a nice holiday. You and David. Or you could treat the girls. Oh, no. Anyway, I did want to tell you on your own because I thought, well, it's up to you then what you do with it. I mean, if you want to tell them about it, you can. And if not, if you want to put it in the bank, well, you can do that instead. Look, why don't you keep it and treat yourself? Not that I'm not grateful because, because I, I am. I'm going to treat yourself. I don't need the full amount for that. And, well, I thought you could do with it more than me, really. You don't understand, Mum. I can't accept it. Well, why not? Because it's your money. You should have it. And anyway, I know I should have told you before. It's something I've not even told David yet. Alison, Alison, are we going to this little reception or what? Only I can't stay long. I've got to be back at the bank by one. Well, I think Mum wants to, don't you, Mum? Right, Audrey. Well, see, David, I, I'm trying to give our Alison £5,000. She won't take it. Why the hell not? It's what Jeffrey's offered me for my share of Edna's cottage. What? Half of it. £5,000? Well, I know it's not a huge sum. Not a huge sum? £5,000? Well, not these days. You could pay a bit off the mortgage. We could put it towards that conservatory you've always fancied. No, David, look. Of course she'll take it. Of course she'll take it. What are you all on about? £5,000? Granny's giving your mum some money. Yes, it's what Jeffrey's offered me for my share of Edna's cottage. Well, half of it. £5,000? Well, I know it's not a huge sum. Wow, what are you going to do with it? Nothing. It's nothing to do with you, what we do with it. It isn't your money. Well, it isn't your money either. It's Mum's money. Well, I'm sure you'll all think of something to do with it. I'm sure we will. Mum, will you lend me some? No, she bloody well won't. Was I asking you? It isn't to spend. It's to do something useful with, like pay off part of the mortgage. Oh, God, Mr Imagination strikes again. Isn't that right, Audrey? Oh, well. If I'd got some money, I'd share it with everybody. How oh, would you, bollocks? Oh, yeah, well, granted, I wouldn't give you any. Or him. But I'd give you some, Mum. And Granny. Yeah, go on, Mum. I mean, we're, we're not going to agree, so why don't you just shut it out? Well, I'm sure your mother will give each of you something. A few pounds each. A few pounds? Oh, dear. Well, perhaps, uh, dare I say it, a hundred each. Yeah, a hundred each. That's very generous. A hundred pounds? You can't buy jack shit with a hundred pounds these days. I beg your pardon. It's true. Nobody's getting anything. Oh, yeah, except you. I bet you selfish sod. Excuse me. Would you mind not speaking like that in front of your grandmother? Just wait till I win the lottery. Oh, yeah. Oh, you'll get nothing, any of you. I wouldn't piss on one of you if you were all on fire. Would you just remember where you are, all of you? Good grief. Mum, you know that lottery ticket what I bought you for your birthday? Well, was it you that won all that 38 million knicker? You bought a lottery ticket for a birthday? No, of course it wasn't me. It's very kind, woman. I'm very grateful. Well, I like to.
to do what I can for you. I'm sorry I swore. I didn't mean what I said. No, neither did I, I'm sorry. It's just Dad's such a greedy, selfish pig. I mean, normal parents like giving their children things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so mean. No, it's ingrained. It isn't even as if it's his money to be mean with. One day, when you're learning, you look back to this conversation and cringe. Selene from the bank. Oh. Never. I will never do that because I will never think like you. Hello? Jordan's off on a science trip to London in a couple of weeks' time. An overnighter. I wondered if you fancied spending an overnighter with me. Yes, fine. Thank you. I'll be there. Goodbye. shared out and spent in about three seconds flat. And that was at the funeral. We'd not even left the crematorium. And David was just as bad as any of them. It wasn't my money, it was his money. So I didn't say anything. If that's how they're going to behave over £5,000, they just go mad with £38 million. I just wish there was something I could give my mum. I felt so guilty. I wish there was a way that I could give her some money, some real money, without her even wondering where it came from. I'm sure we can come up with something. Maybe. What about the things we discussed yesterday? Taking on extra stuff. Does that mean you want to wait? No, not necessarily. Like you said, it's silly, but no one I employ needs to know where the money's come from or who I really am. As far as they're concerned, I'm just Alison Braithwaite, your secretary. That's fine. Apart from the fact I will really need a secretary. I know, I'll be your secretary. Alison. It'll be fine, I'll learn. And then when there's just us three, I'm... Jane Crowther, multi-millionaire. Yeah, I am. Oh, watch out. You need to enjoy it. You need to be careful. What do you mean? Oh, who cares? Oh, come on. Let's celebrate your split personality. With champagne and cigars, I know how to chuck money about, even if you don't. And come on, you! You're bog-eyed staring at that computer. No wonder she's so pasty-faced. <laughs> right, the last one's a lift. There's a daft old bag. Oh, 